Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Jonathan Casey. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, welcome. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the OnePlus 8 Pro and a few things that I think that you should try as soon as you get your phone. So let's go ahead and kick this off with number one, which is to visit the OnePlus Lab section within the settings to find some really cool beta features that you could try out right now. In order to get to the OnePlus Lab section, you're gonna go into the settings and then scroll all the way down until you see utilities. Tap on utilities, and then at the very bottom, you have OnePlus Laboratory. Go ahead and tap on that. And these are the different features that you have access to. These include DC dimming, which if you are a tech reviewer or someone that makes tech videos, you really appreciate this because a lot of the times when you're trying to record a phone screen, you'll get like a weird flicker. However, DC dimming, when enabled, all you have to do is just tap on it and then tap on activate. It should technically cut back on that flicker so you can record when the screen is dimmed a lot lower than it might be before. If we back out of DC dimming and then go under hyper motion smoothing, this is gonna be similar to the effect that you can access, which we'll cover later in the display section. However, this one's supposed to be taken a little bit further, being able to bump up your graphics to 120 frames per second, which is gonna be great for gaming or viewing content shot in 60 frames per second or even 120 frames per second. But I really haven't noticed the difference. If we back out of motion smoothing and then go under enable dark tone in more apps. So this is supposed to bring dark mode or dark tone mapping to apps that don't fully support it. However, if I enable it and then go under an app that doesn't actually support it, such as Facebook, you can see nothing has changed. If I go under another one, such as Send Anywhere, so we'll open Send Anywhere. Again, you can see nothing has changed. Um, but then you go back to the setting and it still says that apps have to support the forced way of enabling dark tone mapping. I don't really understand it, but I'm gonna keep tinkering with it. And the reason why I'm bringing it to your attention and showing you these features is so that way you could do the same thing, play with them, and then you could also give OnePlus feedback on these beta features. It's really nice to be a part of the OnePlus community, and this is just one way that you can be involved with that community. The next thing I think you should try as soon as you get your OnePlus 8 is something called Quick Launch. How it works is, if you're on your lock screen and your fingerprint scanner is enabled, just press and hold on the fingerprint scanner. And then as you swipe your finger, you can do different actions. Like I set up a custom one to launch pro mode, but you can do a new event, add a note, or do a voice search. There's a lot more that you can do. These are just some of the ones that come uh, preset. Let me show you how to access quick launch and how you can set it up yourself. To access quick launch, you're gonna dive into your settings and then we're gonna do a search for quick launch. It's the easiest way to find any of the settings that I go over in this video, so just keep that in mind. So right here at the top, it says Quick Launch. Tap on that, and then tap on Quick Launch again. You can see I already have it turned on, but by default, I believe it's turned off. So go ahead and enable it. Go into Shortcut Settings, and here's where you can apply different shortcuts. So just tap on Add Shortcuts, and then this is a long list of things that you can do. So I highly suggest that you check it out. And if you don't like any of the preset shortcuts, you can always add an app yourself. So that way, if I wanted to maybe do Lightroom, I could do that. Now when I back up, go to the lock screen, press and hold on the fingerprint scanner, and then swipe over, I can launch Lightroom. I would keep the list very minimal for the most part though, because it's kind of difficult to swipe your finger over and over without it lifting the screen. So um, yeah, I think it's a great way of accessing things that you need access to on the fly. Next up is something called Parallel Apps. So if I open my Twitter app here, you can see I am completely logged in, I'm good to go. However, what if I have another Twitter account or say I have two Facebook accounts? Um, you're actually able to manage both of those without having to download a third-party app using Parallel Apps. So if I go back into my settings and then go to the top here and search for Parallel Apps, see right here, tap on it, and then tap on Parallel Apps again, and then just enable the one that you want. So if you have two Twitter accounts, enable it. If you have two Facebook accounts, enable that. If you have two of all of these accounts, enable all of them. And as you download more social media apps, as long as they are supported, you can go back in and enable it and then manage both of your accounts. So to give you an example, I'm gonna go ahead and enable the one for Twitter. And if I go back into my app drawer here, you can see it created a separate app, like a duplicate of the original app. However, if I tap on that, you can see I am not logged in. And if I go back and tap on my original Twitter app, you can see I am still logged in. And if you're wondering if Snapchat works, because I know that's gonna be a question down in the comment section, let's go ahead and bounce over to the Google Play Store. 
and download Snapchat. And once it's downloaded, we'll go ahead and take a look at whether or not it is supported in case you have two Snapchat accounts. So Snapchat has downloaded. We'll go ahead and open it up. You can see it's right there. I don't have a Snapchat account, so I'm not going to log in. But if I bounce back into the settings under parallel apps, you can see it popped up right here. So if I enable it and then go back into my app drawer, I have two apps here. So if you have two Snapchat accounts, you can manage both. I know this isn't like an exclusive feature for the OnePlus 8 or OnePlus 8 Pro, but it's still really cool and something that I suggest that you check out, especially if you manage multiple accounts every single day. I would love to see this open up for other apps like Creative Cloud subscriptions. That way, if you have two different subscription services, uh, maybe one for school and then one for personal use, you can browse both Lightroom folders. That would be really neat, but overall, Parallel apps is definitely something I recommend that you just dive in and uh, mess with it if you have the need to use it. Moving on, we have App Locker. To access App Locker, you're going to go in your settings and then again, just do a search, App Locker, tap on it, and then tap on App Locker again. Now, App Locker is going to be great for people that have a lot of important information that you just don't want in the hands or eyes of someone else or if you have an app that you just really don't want your kids messing around in in case they accidentally delete something like maybe your gallery app something like that you can lock it down to where it requires a password uh, to get into that application so we're going to go ahead and set this one up i'm going to enter my pin real quick and now we have access to the app locker uh, i can add an app just by simply tapping on the add app button and we'll say I want to add my gallery. So I'm gonna go ahead and lock down my gallery. And then it says hide notification content. So that means you can actually hide like a social media app or an app that you're steadily getting notifications for, like maybe your email app. You can put that in an app locker, which might be smart in case, you know, you give your kids your phone a lot and they could accidentally delete important emails. So that's there and it could be useful for that scenario. But you can see I have the gallery locked down now. So if I go back and then try to access my gallery, it's gonna prompt me for a pin. Another cool feature is the ability to do a quick reply in landscape when responding to like maybe an Instagram notification versus having to do it in portrait. To access quick reply in landscape, go back into your settings, type in quick reply, and you'll see it pop up right here. Quick reply in landscape, tap on that, and then tap on it again at the very bottom of that list. These are going to be the apps that support quick reply and landscape. Just like a lot of the features on this list, the applications do need to support this feature. Luckily, apps like Instagram, WhatsApp, and many others are very widely used applications, so you shouldn't really have too many issues. Uh, once you're inside the setting, just start enabling the apps that you want to support quick reply and landscape, and then also enable the use floating keyboard option. Personally, I like it. You don't have to do this, but I think it definitely makes a difference. So let's say I'm on YouTube and I'm just you know browsing through some videos here my phone's already in the landscape position and then all of a sudden I get a notification so here's one on Instagram if I tap reply it's gonna give me my feed over here but if I tap on the message box right here it's gonna pull up a little mini keyboard that I can move around on the screen but I can also use to swipe type if you long press the power button on the OnePlus 8 or the OnePlus 8 Pro, it's actually going to launch the Google Assistant versus pulling up the power menu. But if you wanna customize that or any of the other functions associated with the power button, you can do so. In order to change or customize this feature, let's go ahead and dive into the settings and then go under buttons and gestures. At the very bottom, you have the option for double click the power button and press and hold the power button. By default, the double click is going to launch your camera, but you can disable it altogether if you choose to do so, if we go back and then go under press and hold the power button. Now, by default, if you press and hold it, it's going to pull up the Google Assistant. However, I like to change it from Google Assistant to the power menu because I would much rather have it pull up my power menu. And that's how you can adjust the power button functionality. Another thing I recommend is knowing how to adjust your display settings. And I'm not just talking like your standard settings, but getting into the advanced portion and really finding out how you can adjust your refresh rate, your color calibration, or even your resolution. To access those settings, go back into the main page on your settings and then tap on display, and then go down to where you see advanced and tap on that. Now this is gonna be where you can change all of the advanced functionality that is associated with your display. So you have screen calibration, right now mine is set to advanced and then display P3. This is gonna give you an extremely accurate looking display while also giving you plenty of saturation to make the colors more enjoyable versus the muted tones on natural. 
So I like to leave it on advanced and then display P3. However, you can do sRGB or you can do AMOLED wide gamma. So I'm gonna leave it on the P3 setting, the one that I had it on originally. And then if we back up, we can also change the resolution from Quad HD Plus to Full HD Plus if you want to conserve a little bit more battery life. However, if you really don't want to take your phone out of Quad HD Plus, but you still wanna conserve some battery life, you can always enable auto power saving, and this is going to dynamically switch between Quad HD Plus to Full HD Plus based on the content that you're viewing and whether it's the appropriate resolution for that content. So if you turn that on, technically speaking, you should be able to reduce the battery drain that comes associated with leaving your phone in Quad HD Plus all of the time. So if we back out of resolution and then go into refresh rate, this is gonna be where you can switch from 120 hertz to 60 hertz. 60 hertz is going to be less smooth, but you're gonna get better battery life, and 120 hertz is just going to be ultra smooth. I personally just like to leave it in 120 hertz because I love that silky smooth frame rate. It just looks awesome, especially in Quad HD+. But if you wanted to conserve some battery life, you could drop it to 60. I would love to see like a 90 hertz option here. I don't know. Just a thought, could be pushed out in an update. If you like to read a lot on your phone, then you really might appreciate reading mode. To access reading mode, go back into your settings, go under display, scroll down until you see reading mode. What reading mode is gonna do is change your display either to a chromatic effect or to a mono effect. Let me show you. So first of all, I'm going to assign an app that way it automatically switches to reading mode whenever I launch that app versus having to go in and manually turn it on and turn it off yourself. So I'm going to add Feedly to the app list and then you get to pick the effect. So let's go ahead and try them both. First, we'll do chromatic, we'll back up, and now let's launch Feedly. So we'll go into Feedly, and it should automatically change into the chromatic effect. Basically, it desaturated the entire image. You can see there's still some slight saturation here with the green, but for the most part, it is a black and white or more sepia tone-like image. So now let's go back into the settings, go back under display, Scroll down to reading mode. And now we're gonna change it to the mono effect. So we'll re-add the app and then change it to mono. And now we'll go back into Feedly. And this should take away all of the saturation and it should be a black and white image, which it did. So if you're big into reading digital magazines or books from maybe the Kindle app, uh, make sure to check this out. It should be much easier on your eyesight. The OnePlus 8 and the OnePlus 8 Pro both have phenomenal displays, but if you want to get a little bit more contrast and vibrancy out of your display, go into your settings, go into your display, and then toggle on the Vibrant Color Effect Pro. It gives you a little example of what, what it's going to do right here. So now if we go into YouTube and watch maybe some 4K HDR content, you're going to notice that the colors are a little bit more vibrant, a little bit more punchy, and it's going to provide more contrast than when the mode was toggled off. In some videos it's gonna be hard to notice, but even if it's just a minimal amount of difference, you're gonna see a difference. The display on the OnePlus 8 Pro has a refresh rate of 120 hertz while maintaining the Quad HD Plus resolution. Where the refresh rate or the 120 hertz really comes in clutch is when viewing content shot in 60 frames per second or higher, or playing games and you want a higher refresh rate. But if you wanted to force this smoothness on say 24 frames per second content, you can do so. To enable that, go into your settings, scroll down to you see display, and then make sure motion graphics smoothing is on. It doesn't work that good on mini TVs. Uh, you'll notice a lot of artifacts and weird stuff going on. For the most part, it works okay on this device, but honestly, I really can't see a big difference between content with this feature turned on versus content with this feature turned off. But some of you might, and if you're big into that, you know, reality TV type look, go ahead and turn this on and then watch some YouTube content and let me know what you think. If you're new to OnePlus, then you might find it difficult to locate dark mode. To locate it, you're gonna go in the settings, and then if you go under display, which is where it might be on other phones, you don't have an option for dark mode. You do have an option for night mode, 
where you can adjust the color temperature and the brightness of the display, but it's not the theme that you're looking for. So what you're gonna do is go under customization and then tap on preset theme and then turn it to nuanced dark. And this is going to change the overall theme of your phone, giving you that nice AMOLED blackout theme that you might've been looking for. Now, while we're in here, let's go ahead and talk about the next thing that I think you should do, and that's customize your phone. So inside of here, you have a lot of customization options. You have lock screen customization, so you can switch up the wallpaper, the clock type, the fingerprint animation, and the horizon light. The horizon light is a light that will appear whenever your screen is turned off and then you get a notification. You'll see different lighting effects light up the edges of the display, and it looks pretty cool. You also have system customization, so you can change the accent color, the overall tone, system icon shapes, and you can apply a different icon pack, which you can download from the Google Play Store. So if you were big into Nova back in the day and you have a lot of you know, icon packs that you already paid for, they will work with the stock launcher. It's awesome. You can also adjust the font, so you can have Roboto or you can use OnePlus's own font. I really like the OnePlus font, and that's the one that I tend to use the most. But yeah, I really, suggest that you go in, go into this customization setting, and then really make this phone your phone. And since we're on the topic of customization, I definitely recommend that you go in and check out the home screen settings to customize different gestures and things like that. What you're gonna do is just press and hold on the display, go under home settings, and these are all of your home screen settings. You have the swipe down gesture built right into the stock launcher, uh, your Google Home feed, which is swiping over to the right will expose your Google Home feed. You can disable it if you want to, double tap to lock. You can hide different icon labels. Uh, you can switch up your launcher layout, which means either have a you know an app drawer or no app drawer. You can you know customize the app drawer itself. There's a lot that you can do in here. But one thing I wanna talk about in particular is something called Hidden Space, which does exactly as the name implies. So at the very bottom, there's an option for Hidden Space. Just tap on that. And it's gonna tell you the gesture that you need to perform in order to access Hidden Space. So if I go home and then just pinch out, there's my Hidden Space and I can add different applications to this space and easily access them just like that. So it's pretty neat if there is something that you wanna keep secret or keep hidden, not sure why, but you could hide it there. I know there's a lot of other things that the OnePlus 8 and OnePlus 8 Pro can do, especially with the camera. So I'm gonna do a dedicated camera walkthrough. If you don't wanna miss that, go ahead and click that subscribe button. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, consider dropping it a thumbs up. If you have anything to add to this list, leave it down below in the comment section, and I'll talk to you fantastic people in the next video.